Hi, if your last name starts with M through Z, I will be your counselor. I'm Miss Clayton, and I'm going to go over some of the stuff about enrollment, and then Miss Lucic's going to come in and wrap it up for us. So next year, you're going to be in ninth grade, and in order to enroll, you're going to do all of your stuff online. We would normally come to you and bring you a whole packet of paper, but all of that stuff is going to be online this year. So if you go to the Southmore webpage, um, at the very top, it talks about enrolling for next year, and that is where you can go in and learn about how you will enroll for next year. And you can also watch this video, um, if you, or your parents can watch this video if uh, they need more references about what to do. Um, you will need a Parent Portal account in order to enroll for next year, and if you do not have a Parent Portal account, you can find it on the Southmore webpage about how to get one. Again, you'll go to just the very front Southmore webpage, and at the very top it says how to enroll for next year. You'll click on that, and then it will come up with all the links that you need in order to complete that process. Um, you will have to choose between more virtual academy, in person, or a combination of the two, which we call Supplemental Online Program, or SOP. So if you want to take all of your classes online, then you would select the more virtual academy. If you want to take some of your classes online and some of your classes at Southmore, you would select SOP. If you would like to take all of your classes at Southmore, then you would be an in-person student. If you do not make a selection um, on the online enrollment process by March 12th, you will be defaulted to take all of your classes at Southmore High School. That would mean you would not be allowed to take any online classes. So if you do wish to take some online classes, you need to make sure that you go through the online enrollment process and select that you would like to take online classes. If you do that, once you select that, then Ms. Lusick or I will reach out to you to figure out what classes you want to take online and make sure that we can get your schedule all set up. Um, we will have freshman orientation in August. It will be August 6th from 8 a.m. to noon. So mark that on your calendar, August 6th at 8 a.m. we will have freshman orientation. Again, all of these things will be on the Southmore webpage. So if you go to that main site, you will see this video, a video about how to get a parent portal link um, and all of that stuff. We do have one piece of paper that Ms. Lucic is going to talk about, and that piece of paper will be due to your U.S. history teacher at your junior high on March 2nd. So on March 2nd, you're going to turn in the one piece of paper that you have to have to your U.S. history teacher at your junior high. There is one thing that I did forget to mention, and that is that whenever you are doing the online enrollment process, you will need to upload your proof of residency. So that is a gas, water, electric bill, or a lease in your parent's name. So they will need that in order to complete that online enrollment process. If you have questions, feel free to email me, christyclayton at moreschools.com. Thank you. Hi, I'm Ms. Lusick, and I'm your counselor if your last name begins with the letters A through L. I'm gonna go over the papers that your history teacher gave you. So you were all given this uh, little group of papers. The top piece of paper is about the freshman orientation that Ms. Clayton mentioned. Make sure your parents get this, put it on the fridge. It's got the uh, orientation dates and time. You will pick up your freshman schedule after orientation. If you do not attend orientation, you cannot pick up your schedule that day. You'll have to wait till the makeup day. So make sure you attend orientation. Then there's a couple pages from some of the teachers at Southmore just uh, telling you about their classes. The blue form is the form that you're going to have to give to your um, history teacher. And it's the course selection form and it tells us what classes you want to take. At the top it gives you the graduation requirements so you can look at those. And then kind of in the middle uh, you need to indicate if you're going to be taking all of your classes in person or if you're going to do a combination, combination of in person and virtual or if you're going to be all virtual. So you will need to choose one of those and then um, that is the enrollment that we will prepare for you. On the left side of the form has all of your core classes, so you will need to choose between the regular core class or the honors, um, if we have an honors available. So you'll choose either honors English or English one. For your math, if you're currently in pre-algebra, you're gonna choose algebra one. If you're currently in algebra one, then you can choose either regular geometry or honors geometry. 
And if you're currently in Honors Geometry, then you can choose Regular Algebra 2 or Honors Algebra 2. Uh, PFL, Personal Financial Literacy, has already been marked for you because every freshman will take that class. And then you can choose from Oklahoma History or Honors Oklahoma History. If you are choosing to do some of your classes in person and some of them virtual, if you would please mark by them whether you're, you want that class virtual or in person. Uh, you could put a V for virtual and SHS for in person. That would help us do your schedule. On the right side of the form, you're going to mark your electives. Number one on your electives needs to be the class that you have to have. So if you're an athlete, you're going to want to put your sport there. Uh, if you're in band, you're going to want to put band, choir, anything that you have to be in, make sure you have that number one. And then after that, make sure you put them in the order of importance to you because we will try and follow uh, this order. You can find all of the classes in the course catalog um, that the career specialist went over with you. There's also a QR code on the back of the form to take you to the course catalog and a web address for the course catalog. So you can access there to look up uh, your electives. Also on the back of the form, it talks about Oklahoma Promise. Oklahoma Promise is a scholarship program that the state does. Uh, you qualify based on your parents' income. If your parents make uh, $55,000 or below, you may qualify for that scholarship, which provides free tuition. Um, there is a um, webinar that OU is hosting to answer questions about Oklahoma Promise. You do need to enroll your student in this by the end of their sophomore year, so it's really important uh, starting freshman year to start uh, taking care of all the requirements for that. So OU is going to have the webinar in March. Uh, there's several different dates in March, and we will put the uh, link to enroll in that on the video. The last thing I want to cover is if you're a transfer student. If, based on your address, you would not be attending Southmore, then you do need to enroll in the school that you would be attending. So if you should attend Westmore based on where your address is, you need to do Westmore's enrollment paperwork uh, virtually because you cannot transfer from a school you're not enrolled in. So you'll need to enroll in the school that you should be attending and then also turn in transfer paperwork to that school. You can obtain the transfer paperwork either from your junior high's office or you can get it from the high school's office. So you will complete the virtual enrollment for the school you should attend, and then you will turn in transfer paperwork to the office of the school you should be attending. They will turn it into the district and then get it to us here at Southmore. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to Ms. Clayton or myself. My email is joannelusick at moreschools.com and then Christy Clayton at moreschools.com. Thank you. Hey guys, I'm Miss Peters and this is Miss Baldwin. We are your career specialists. Uh, the two of us share all three high schools and the feeder schools. And basically our job is to help you think about life after high school, what types of problems you wanna solve, what types of careers you see yourself in um, and what steps it takes to make that happen. Um, today we're gonna walk you through some information that will help you set some of those goals during high school. And Miss Baldwin's gonna start us off. Hey guys, so as Ms. Peters said, um, we're gonna walk you through um, the steps to get started to become a high school student. So we're gonna go ahead and just start with the Moore Public School website. Um, you can also access this from your school's website as well. Um, but once you're here, you're gonna scroll past all of the introduction information here to where you find our students. So once you find our students, we're looking for this course description. In this course description, when you click on that, it's gonna take you to another page um, with some enrollment information. Good news for you guys is you all are headed to high school. So you're gonna use this high school course catalog. And then when you click on this, it's gonna take you to a PDF that um, is applicable for any of our high schools. Um, so let me just show you how to find the information um, and make sure that you understand what's going to be expected of you once you get to high school and what classes you have to take um, in order to graduate. So I'm going to stay on this first page, but I want to find the area that says the more public schools diploma requirements. Um, so when I click on that, it's going to take me to this table. 
Um, and for you all, we're gonna look at the column over here on the far right. So where it talks about the curriculum requirements um, as for graduation. So for English, you have to have four units of English um, or four years of English. For science, you're gonna have to have three years of science or three units. You will wanna pay attention to make sure you understand, uh, make sure that you meet the requirements of the different types of science. Mathematics, you're gonna have to have three units, grades nine through 12. So that's also three years. For social studies, you're gonna have 3.5 units or three and a half units. So you'll have three full years, your 10th, 11th and 12th grade. And typically you get a half a unit your freshman year for Oklahoma history. The next area I wanna cover is foreign language or computer technology. So you get to choose either of those subject areas. Foreign language, you can choose from Spanish, French or Latin. Um, or computer technology starts out with fundamentals of tech and then lands into um, a whole other options of four or five other classes that you get to pick um, depending on what you want to do. So you have to have two years of either of those and you get to pick which order or which one you wanna take there. The additional unit says you have to have one additional unit and that is from any of the above areas that I just went over. So let's say you were on the foreign language route. If you wanted to take the third year of a foreign language, that would count or a third computer class um, or even a fourth math class. You have lots of options there to meet that additional unit. Personal financial literacy is a requirement for graduation. And most of our schools have freshmen take that. Um, so you will be expected to take that. Electives, you get five units of electives and those fill themselves fairly easily. And then lastly, the arts, that's also gonna be available through music. So if you're in band or choir, that's gonna be able to take place there. Drama, speech and debate, and then also our art classes. So two-dimensional art, three-dimensional art, art history, lots of options there. So that is where you're gonna find what classes do I have to have in order to graduate? That's usually a question that gets brought up and they say, what do I have to have? Well, here's where you can find that. So to get back to the next part, so you can figure out well, which English classes are available, I'm gonna go right here at the top of this page, back to the table of contents. And then that takes us back to the table of contents. And then from there, I'm gonna let Ms. Peters walk you through um, how to figure out which class would be best for you to take next. All right, so you'll notice in this table of contents under general information, there's that indented section where Ms. Baldwin found those graduation requirements. Closer to the bottom, um, in fact, second from the bottom, we are going to look at the career clusters chart first. So when you click on the career clusters chart, it will take you to kind of a map of Oklahoma with some colors and symbols running across it. Hopefully these feel a little bit familiar. I know that your junior high counselors have walked you through OK Career Guide. You've had a chance to take some of those assessments and explore some of your options. Um, you will see this chart displayed all over Southmore when you get here. Um, we are wanting to start using this language to help you get used to talking about what you're doing now and what your options are in the future. And so we have taken these six major career fields or these six types of jobs and used those categories on the very next page to help you figure out which electives might be the best fit for you. And so the idea here is that if when you took your assessment, you had all kinds of purple um, in that top five set of suggestions, then you would use the purple section on the career fields chart to help you find electives that line up with the career you're most interested in pursuing in the future. This is just a suggestion. It's a great place to get started. And so you don't have to choose something from within that color set, um, but those are the best fit options that we have available for you. So you'll notice on the left-hand side of your screen, you have a darker navy section. Those will be your core classes. A lot of the pieces that Ms. Baldwin just walked you through, those English, math, science, 
science, social studies types of classes. Um, your athletics are also linked over here. And then as you move across the chart, you see your color-coded section of options. Um, just to show you how it works, using this very first kind of pink, purple, I like to call it magenta color, um, we're just gonna click on the CTE Agriculture Program. From there, it will take you straight to the agriculture section of the website. And all of those links will work the same. They'll take you to that section of class information. This table is giving you so much all in one place. It starts off with your course number and your course title. You then have how many credits that class is worth. And as Ms. Baldwin already explained, a credit or a unit takes one year to earn. If it's a 0.5, it's a semester long class. Then it gives you the grade level of which students are allowed to take the class. And that final far right hand side column is giving you your prerequisites. So this column is telling you if there is something required before you can take the class you're considering. All of this is fantastic information, um, but it doesn't exactly tell you what order things go in. For almost all of our core classes and electives, we have course sequence charts or flow charts just below this original table that will walk you through how your classes connect to each other. So below this career tech table, you'll see that almost all of our pathways start with intro to agri-science. And then if you are interested in horticulture and landscape, we have a pathway and class suggestions. Or if you are interested, um, our ag power classes are the welding types of classes. Um, maybe you wanna be a vet whenever you grow up and you get your job. Well, maybe you want to move through our agriculture program in the animal science field. Um, so there's a lot of options for you and the course catalog can show you what those options are and how they can help move you through high school towards your long-term goals. Um, as you scroll back up to that original um, agriculture table or whichever section you're in, you'll see two sets of links in that right-hand corner of the table. The first one will take you all the way back to page one for your table of contents, so you can just start from scratch. And the second link will take you back up to that color-coded table of electives. So if you're looking in agriculture, and maybe it wasn't a great fit, you can come back to the table and see if maybe the business and marketing classes are a better fit for you, or if you wanna learn more about the world language classes that we offer. Everything is linked from this page and it'll be the perfect place for you to get started as you're deciding what to do for next semester. So once you've made it back to this table, not only does it have those elective options for you, but as I pointed out in the beginning, that Navy column on the left-hand side walks you through your core course requirements. Um, I'm going to click on math to show you what those options look like. Just like for agriculture, you have that very first table that walks you through all of the options. And down below it, you still have kind of a flow chart, but now it's set up as a table um, because there are a lot of different ways to move through those math requirements. So some of you may have worked ahead during junior high and taken high school level math. Um, and so we wanted you to see what the progression through these classes looks like and how you can know what comes next. So if in eighth grade, you're taking pre-algebra, it is so easy. You just find pre-algebra on that list for eighth grade, hop on down to ninth grade, and you're taking algebra one next year. Maybe you're already in algebra one. Well, then the next column over tells you that your ninth grade class will be honors geometry. And a handful of you might already even be in honors geometry. And if that's the case, then for ninth grade, you'll be in honors algebra two. There's a course sequence table like this for your science classes, for English, and for social studies as well. So if you're ever not sure which class to choose next, this is where you would start. 
All right, guys, hopefully that information was helpful for you all. We are looking forward to seeing you next year in the years to come at Southmore. Um, let us know how we can help you and we look forward to seeing you soon. Good luck. Do you enjoy taking pictures, making videos, or even helping out with the yearbook? Well, if you join Miss Powell's class, you can do all three of those. You can join her photography class, yearbook class, or even the broadcasting class. In photography, you get to learn how to edit videos, edit with Photoshop, and even learn how to take some high quality pictures. If you join yearbook, you get to help out with making the Southmore yearbook, which is a great thing to do. And if you join broadcasting, you get to learn how to make videos such as this one and many, many more. So if you're interested, please contact Tasha Powell at moreschools.com.